Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about the death of cinematic blockbusters. So not blockbuster the store, but like blockbusters in general as like a film. So when we look at blockbusters, why are they failing at the cinemas? Why are they failing at the box office? Things like The Joker 2, on paper, should have made its money back, regardless of what the content of that film is and what people are feeling about it. Megopolis as well, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's new movie, struggling to make its money back. Black Adam, another movie, failed to really break even, although at the end it did break even at the end of that run. Mission Impossible as well, like the latest Mission Impossible movie struggled a bit at the box office, although it did release alongside Barbie and Oppenheimer. But when we look at the blockbusters of today compared to 20, 30 odd years ago, there is a big difference between it being a culturally significant event and what it is today. And why are blockbusters dying? Why are films, cinematic blockbusters, like if you put the new Avatar out there, don't get me wrong, people are going to gravitate and watch the new Avatar movie when it comes out. If you put something else out there, like a new Mad Max movie, even Furiosa struggled at the box office. It comes down to really, things are going to streaming too fast. And people, when they look at cinemas, the modern state of cinemas and the cinema going experience, more people are go gravitating towards, well, if I'm going to go to the cinema, I'm going to get a subpar experience because a lot of cinemas charge too much for drinks, popcorn, you know, the whole experience is going to cost you maybe a hundred if you're taking a date or taking someone else or going with friends. It can cost you a, it could cost you a pretty penny, especially during a cost of living crisis. So a lot of people will look at that as like, oh, well, you know, popcorn might cost me $10, $15. A drink might cost me an extra 10 on top of it. And yes, you could say, oh, but I bring a backpack in. Some cinemas stop backpacks at the door. Now, they are getting better with letting people take their own stuff in, but it's still not at that point yet where if you're at home, you don't even have to worry about that. You could go to your nearest shop or your nearest uh, supermarket, get whatever you want. You can have a whole bunch of supplies for under 10. And you can watch a movie on a streaming service along with all the other movies you could think of for that month for probably less than $20. So you have to look at the modern state of cinema and how it does it compete. A, the prices are too overinflated, and that's because A, the movie going experience, the way it's structured is that the cinemas themselves will get a larger cut of the candy bar, the, as you call it, the popcorn, the drinks. They get a bigger cut of that because they supply it. Whereas the cinema has to pay out X amount of dollars to the studio for having that film in cinemas. Now, obviously, they would get a percentage of that as well, but it wouldn't be as big as like the candy bar. So that's why candy bars are so overinflated. But when you look at, when you look at the modern state of cinema, People don't want to go and have to worry about, oh, am I going to be sitting next to a kid who won't put down their iPhone? You see some of these kids come into the cinema sometimes, and it's not always kids. Some adults do it as well, and some of the older people do it as well. So it's not just kids doing it. They come into the cinema, and it's like, why are you in the cinema if, you only, if you're going to have the phone on nonstop and keep texting, and like, why even be there? Like, why even come to the cinema if you're just going to ignore the movie? And it just gets to that point where a lot of people are just fed up with it. People are at that point now where they're going to look at a cinema going experience and be like, yeah, I kind of want to see the movie, but I don't want to be sitting next to a kid who's on their iPhone all night or, you know, someone who's just going to talk obnoxiously loud to their friend next to them. Like, the whole point of a cinema is to watch the movie and enjoy it. And yes, have the cinema going experience. Enjoy it with other people. But if you're going in there to have like, okay, I'm going in there and I'm just going to talk to my friend this whole time. Why even be there? And I think it's at that point now where People just don't want to engage with it. People are just fed up with it and don't want to go to it. Now, obviously, there are there are there are matters where it's like Barbie and Oppenheimer were an exception to that rule. Like it brought people in, Avatar is an exception to that rule. There are exceptions to the rule, but it's not every movie. If you go, if you look at a film like Me Megopolis, uh, was it Megopolis? Actually, no, it was Joker 2. I saw some memes online where someone was actually watching Bleach in the cinema and being like, "This movie's so crap. I'm just going to put on Bleach." If you don't like the movie, just leave the cinema. And yeah, I, I'm not the biggest fan. Like, I'm not going to see Joker at cinemas because, as I said in a previous video, they had a core demographic that they ignored. And I am protesting by not going to see that cinema, in the movie in the cinemas. And yes, Warner Brothers will look at it like, oh, well, that movie didn't do too well. Well, that's the point. When you make a musical, when the first one is a diff dramatically different movie, where it's a theatrical uh, a thriller almost, it's a drama thriller and you switch it to a musical, obviously the core, the core fan base of that movie is going to go like, oh, okay, um, I don't really want to see a musical take on the Joker. 
But do you get what I mean? Like, people will still go and see that movie. And people will want to enjoy it. So a lot of people are going to be like, well, if people are just going to be bored shitless in that movie, why would I go to the cinemas and sit beside someone watching Bleach? So a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, it's actually more convenient for me to watch a streaming option. It's actually more convenient to, for me to watch it when it comes to HBO Max or when it comes to Binge in Australia or something. It's actually more convenient. And it's actually cheaper at the end of the day. And it's a better experience overall because a lot of people... Look, 20, 30 odd years ago, we had CRT televisions. Box televisions that weren't great at showing cinema movies, like weren't great at showing the aspect ratio correctly, weren't great at relaying the experience of a cinema film. Now with home theatres, you can have your TV, like I've got a 65 inch LG OLED C9. I've got a Panasonic QB820. And for sound, I put in AirPods. I know people are gonna say, oh, but your sound setup is horrible. Well, actually I live in an apartment, so I can't just blast thing. Now, obviously when I move out into my own place or whatever, when I do get to that point, I will buy an actual like 10.1 sound system. Like I'll have Dolby Atmos or 12.1, whatever I can get. Like I will have a proper sound system. But for right now in apartment living, you need to, you need to be aware that, yeah, I, I use AirPods because it is quieter and I can watch a cinema, I can watch movies back to back and experience them with full loudness in my ears. Bang, don't matter. Yes, I'm also sacrificing some things doing that. I know that the trade-off for me is worth it. But you look at people where they can have an, an actual sound system, like an actual sound system built for Dolby Atmos. You can have the TV as big as you want. Like they're coming out with TVs that are 100 inch now. Like, you know, you can have a proper cinema experience at home and you don't have to deal with the lines. You don't have to deal with the, the bull crap in the cinema of, oh, is this person going to talk? Are they going to use their iPhone? Is the Apple Watch going to keep going off in my field of view when they lift up their arm? Like you don't have to deal with all of that when you're at home. And cinemas have not tried to remedy the problem. They have not tried to fix the problem. Because if they were trying to fix the problem, don't get me wrong, the slow death of cinemas is self-manufactured. It's not the audience. They try to blame the audience saying, oh, the audience are coming back to cinemas. Oh, we, you know, it's all about the audience. It has nothing to do with the audience. A, it's too expensive. Cinema tickets have went up year after year after year. I remember going to cinemas in the 90s and 2000s for less than $10, like new, brand new movies. Now they do week movies. Like I know they do movie of the week where you might get in for 10 bucks in Australia, but I'm talking about the latest blockbuster where you could go and see the latest like movie of the era. And you could actually see that movie for less than $10. And then you'd get your popcorn and it'd be like $2.50. You'd get your drink for like a couple of dollars and you'd have the whole experience for less than 15. Now, obviously you talk about inflation, that might be $20 in today's dollars. Far from the $40 or $50 of today, it hasn't inflated the same way as everything else. And people are going to look at that and be like, well, of course, like, look, cinema change just got understood where they could make money. They haven't tried to remedy the problem. So the first thing they have to remedy is get those prices down. Like, yes, you can charge $12, $15 for a bucket of popcorn. We get it. But imagine if you, imagine if you had a base, a base model of, okay, you get the medium popcorn, we're not going to make a large, ultra large one or whatever. Have the base model like be medium. Have the medium one cost, I don't know, eight bucks. Have it cost eight bucks. If you want to drink, it costs $12. And then you watch how many people pick up that bucket of popcorn, how much a percentage you get compared to like the outrageous prices we see on popcorn and drink uh, combos these days. And have the choc tops in there as well if you want. I know people love their choc tops. But that's part one. If they want a bigger flow of money, lower the price of the popcorn and then watch everyone buy it. And I know there's health people who will say, oh, I still wouldn't buy it. That's, you. that's your own preference. That's fine. But that's part one of the problem. Fix the candy bar. It costs too much. The ticket prices are the next thing. Studios are getting way too greedy with the ticket prices, especially when they're going to be on, online in 30 days. People are not going to shell out $40 to go to a movie when they can watch it on streaming service in a month you know they're not going to pay as what they would when titanic came out you had to wait until september the year after 1998 to get titanic on vhs you had to wait a full year almost whereas today if i wanted to watch the latest well, avatar is a bit of an exception um, but if i wanted to watch the new inside out i bet that's probably on disney plus right now you wouldn't have to wait a year to almost to watch it it's not encouraging people to go to the cinema so they need to delay these things between cinematic and digital release. If they're going the digital route, then yes, you need to put them on digital. I understand it brings an audience to digital. It makes an incentive to get Disney Plus or whatever, or Amazon or whatever it is. 
but leave it in the cinema as long as possible and then have a gap, a buffer period between, okay, if you missed it in the cinema, you're going to wait three months before you get it on thing. And that's how DVD and Blu-ray used to do it. You would wait before you could get Avatar. You would wait before you got Titanic. You would wait before you got Mad Max. You would wait. And yes, the gap has got better, but this instant gratification method of, okay, I need it now, I need it now, I need it now. If, I, if it's gone away for 10 months, then I'm not going to watch it. I don't care. I forget about it in 10 months. If it's a good enough movie, people will come back in 10 months and be like, yeah, Oppenheimer, yeah, okay, I haven't watched it in 10 months. I need to go and buy that because I want to re-experience it and Nolan is very big pushing the Blu-ray, uh, the 4K. It's the way he intends it to be watched or whatever. I need to watch it that way if I miss the film print. Make it an experience and people will come back. But that's the second problem. They need to delay these between the, when they come into their streaming counterpart. They need to delay it. It needs to be done. It can't just be a situation of, oh, well, we've got to get numbers up on Netflix or whatever, so we're just going to have it on there in 28 days. People won't go to the cinemas. That's, you're basically hurting it by doing that. That's part two of the problem. And then the third part of it is, and I know that the cinema chains are going to get a bit of a gloat out of this, is the audience. And when I say the audience, I'm not talking about the general audience. I'm not talking about the whole audience. I'm talking about that small minority who come into the cinemas, who use their phone, are there for no reason other than to use their phone, text, and be as obnoxiously loud as possible. Have security guards in there. Have a security guard on standby. If someone's being obnoxiously loud, get the security guard to go ask, ask them to leave. Like, it used to happen back in the 90s. People, when... I've used to watch people get kicked out of the cinemas for being obnoxiously loud. But these days you can't do that because whatever reason. But you would be asked to leave if you kept talking and doing stuff during a cinema. And if you got really antisocial about it, you would usually be asked to leave or cops would be caught if a situation was occurring, like if you were being completely antisocial about it. But it needs to go back to the template of if you're in the cinema, watch the movie. Don't be there just to talk. And also lock up people's phones. As I've said in a previous video, comedians do it. Certain shows that don't want to have a, just want to be switched off. Like, as I've mentioned previously, David Chappelle, Chris Rock, I want to see the One Dead Man Tour, The Undertaker locks people's phones up. Lock people's phones up. When they go to the cinema, make them put it in a bag, switch it off first so it doesn't keep buzzing off in people's pockets. If they must leave it on for whatever reason, have it in a way that's done in, I don't know, you have to have it, you have to really analyze it. Obviously, people have families. I understand people need to be aware of like, okay, babysitter might be trying to call or whatever. But in that case, if you want to see what's coming through, then ask them to leave the cinema. Like, you have the tap thing at the end, at the back of the cinema, where you go out of the cinema, you have to go outside, there's a staff member there, tap it, you unlock the bag, you take your call, whatever you want. And then if you want to go back in the cinema, put it back in the bag, seal it up, go back in. But to then inconvenience others because you need to have your phone on at all times, that's bullshit. And that is something that needs to be addressed. And people are not going to the cinemas because people are not going to pay. Look, if the ticket prices are what they are, people don't want to feel like, okay, I've paid $40 and this guy's come in and he's spoiling my experience because he's got his phone up filming the screen. I saw people going to the cinemas and film the freaking thing. Like, I get it. People want to get it online faster. If you tried that... 10 odd years ago, they would have confiscated the device and called the cops. And now it's just automatically good to go because no one gives it a crap anymore. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Cinemas are doing it to themselves. And yes, the audience is com contributing partly in that with some people who just go in and think they're filming Avatar themselves and be like, oh, I'm going to put this on the Pirate Bay. <laughs> and yeah, there's probably about 50 million different cam things on Pirate Bay. So yeah, whatever. But like, you know, this whole thing of like, you're not at a concert, you're not at whatever. And concerts are their own thing. Like I go to a lot of concerts and I'm one of the people who have my phone out constantly. I'll, I will admit, I'm the problem with concerts. <laughs> but with cinemas, it's a filmed movie. And yeah, if you're going in, take, what I will do is I'll usually, I'll usually take a photo of um, the ticket outside when the poster's behind it. I'll take a photo, bang, there's the Instagram. If I want a selfie with it, boom, boom. Put it on Instagram, whatever. But they have to do it in there. Anyways, this is just a bit of a rant. I think cinemas are doing it to themselves. And the modern state of blockbusters is, yeah, people will still watch the new Avatar. I'm getting Mr. Whippy coming. 
Can you guys hear that? That's Mr. Whippy. <laughs> I don't know if Americans have Mr. Whippy, but yeah, it's definitely um, a culturally significant event in Australia where you hear that ice cream truck coming, it brings a lot of us back to that childhood. But yeah, I will finish on that whilst Mr. Whippy goes past. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Why are blockbusters struggling at the box office? You put something Joaquin Phoenix in a Joker sequel on paper, it's going to make money. I mentioned, uh, one of my comments said in the previous video on that thing, if you put Joaquin Phoenix with Ridley Scott in Napoleon, that would have been like a billion dollar movie, or well, not a billion dollar movie, it would have been 800 million easily, but it struggled because it knew, everyone knew it was coming to Apple two weeks later, you know, or whatever the delay was. Putting things on a streaming service is killing the business, as well as the cinema going experience not being what it once was. Nothing's enforced, there's no security, no one is going to pay for a subpar experience, something that's overpriced to go there and watch someone play with their iPhone for two hours. I'm just at that point now where I barely go to the cinemas. I've probably went two or three times this year, and that's me as a cinema-loving fan. I love going to the cinema. But for me, it's just one of those things where I'll have to time it and be like, okay, well, if I want to go, I want to go during the day when school's in so that no one's in there with their phone, no kids. But then you go in the middle of the day and there's people who go and sit on their phones anyways. So it's not only kids that do it. Anyways, let me know what you think. Um, this is a bit of a rant and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.